If you've seen my previous videos, you recognize my 286 here. This is the computer that I've been putting together and trying to get working with Compact Flash or an SD card as a hard drive. Um, I've been having the most difficult time getting this thing working, having done all sorts of troubleshooting, taking the chips out, cleaning everything on the motherboard. I tested the signal levels on the bus. I brought in a different IDE card. What I was able to do is format the hard drives and yet when I tried to read from them, if I tried to read over a one kilobytes file size, it would just lock up the computer hard and eventually give a not ready error. I could have did everything I could to try to figure out what was going on with this thing. I really had no idea why this thing would just not read the hard drives properly. So initially I was trying to use an IDE to SD card adapter because that's what I wanted to run my computers with, you know, using old IDE hard drives is risky. They die frequently. But plugging that in would just cause the issue. It would lock up. So then I tried some IDE hard drives that I had. Uh, they were like newer drives, but still IDE, you know, maybe five gigabyte one, something like that. Known good drives. They worked fine on my other computer. Same problem. It would just lock up. So I was really frustrated and had no idea what the problem was until I dug around in my parts bin and I found this. This is a 1.6 gigabyte Maxter yeah, 1997. So this old drive totally works. In that computer, I can only read 504 megabytes of it because that's the maximum that the BIOS supports. But this worked. Going back to any of the other drives, including my adapter, didn't work. So I was trying to rack my brain as to why this worked, but all my other drives didn't work. So probing around on the bus using my oscilloscope, I found that this drive basically outputs 5 volts to on the IDE bus, while all the newer drives were doing 3.3. And if you remember from my other videos, an IDE bus is just an extension of the actual ISA bus. It's literally connected directly through. So the interrupt that's used for IDE hard drives is actually being driven from the hard drive itself. So I thought maybe that was the problem. Maybe it needed 5 volts. So I went out and bought this Compact Flash to IDE adapter. Now this particular one runs everything at 5 volts, and yet it did not work. It froze up. So right away that shows that it was not a voltage thing. And incidentally, I had bought a second adapter. This is a different one. And this actually has a jumper on it. Um, this one allows you to pick 5 volts or 3.3. But nonetheless, neither of these worked. So that brings us to today. I did a little research and I found that basically all 286 motherboards are actually clones of each other. So remember in the old days, it was a PC clone because IBM came out with the original XT and then the AT. AT was the model 5170. And all of the motherboards that came out that were 286s were essentially clones of the IBM 5170. Now, if you look at my board here, you can see um, here's the 286 processor right here, but it has a custom chipset here. And the original IBM AT motherboard had a ton of chips on it. I mean, lots and lots of discrete components. Yeah, as you can see on this, it has a bunch of more highly integrated kind of ASIC chips. But nonetheless, all of these chips directly clone or emulate the original 5170. So where am I going with this? I thought, what is different about this 286 motherboard from another? Obviously, the chipset is made by, uh, I think, SunTac. But because it's a clone, it should work exactly the same as any other 286. And reading around... There were plenty of people who were able to use these compact flash to ID adapters on their old computers without any issue. So I thought, what's different about mine than those other ones? Well, the BIOS. This particular computer was running an AMI BIOS from around 1987 or 88 that said, you know, it was designed for this particular motherboard. It's this is a DFI racer motherboard. So I did some research and I looked around and I tried to find the newest 286 BIOS I could. And I happened to find one from Quadtel from 1990. And incidentally, those BIOS images were pulled out of chips that were inside a working IBM 5170. So I knew that those particular BIOSes worked on the 5170. So, of course, the next problem is, how do you burn a BIOS? These aren't EEPROMs like on new computers. You can't just flash them. You need an EEPROM flasher. I went on eBay and I found this bad boy the TL-866. I bought the CS model. Here it is. This is actually a USB EEPROM flasher. It actually does a lot more than that. It can program PIC chips, it can program at mega microprocessors, 
It can do all sorts of different things. I think you can even test RAM chips with this thing. I then went ahead and bought two EEPROMs. With the help of my new flasher for $35, I flashed my $3 BIOS chip with the 1990 Quadtel BIOS image. So I yanked out the original BIOS chips from the computer, and here they are right here. They both had stickers over like this, but I peeled this one off. It's actually stuck on the bottom now because I wanted to know the part number of this uh, EEPROM here. I don't have an eraser yet, which is why I didn't just erase these and reuse these chips. And I put the newly flashed BIOS chips into the computer. Here they are, labeled U27 and U47, which I think are the original markings on the IBM 5170. Now on 26 motherboards there are two chips, like you saw the original two, and then there's two here. And one is labeled high and one is labeled low. So I put the chips in the computer and now it's the moment of truth. Let's turn the computer on. I have this VGA monitor connected right here. And here we go. Quadtel Enhanced 286 BIOS. I don't have a floppy disk in here. It booted off the C drive, which is basically this SD card. So basically my problem all along was the BIOS. And switching out with this Quadtel one that's not even designed for this motherboard actually fixed my problem. So here we are with a Windows 2.0. We go into the Windows directory. We go to terminal. For I have a modem in this computer that I got with the 286 motherboard. I've never been able to test it, but it looks like it's a 2400 baud modem. And here we are, ETA. And there's the carrier. No carrier. There we go. Indianapolis 500. Well, there you go. With help of a $38 EEPROM programmer and a couple $3 chips, well, $1.50 each, I was able to revive this old computer and make it work again. And because I've changed the battery and everything is good to go on this motherboard, this computer should last a long time to come. If you found any of this helpful at all, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Put any comments down below if you have any questions or anything any thoughts about this and uh, subscribe for more videos thanks for watching bye